Hello plant people, Nora the Lekker Queen here. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where we talk about all things indoor plants. Today we are going to talk about poles and how I water my poles. You would have all seen my gorgeous beautiful poles where I grow my pothos, my philodendrons, my monsteras, really really big and the leaves are massive. But how do you keep the pole moist? Because keeping the pole moist is key to getting those leaves as big as they can be. So I've got here today my philodendron silver sword. Look at that, it's almost as tall as I am. That is a silver sword. And I've got also behind here my Monstera Deliciosa. This is also living with the moss pole. There's a moss pole attached to that. And I will show you how I water my poles using these as my two examples. So, what do I use to water my poles? You might think water. No, I do not just use water to water my poles. I water my poles with a nutrient solution. It's very important to water your poles with a nutrient solution because remember, you have a root system growing in that moss. There's a whole root system growing in here and we want those roots to have access to nutrients as well as water, not just water. Remember, plants need nutrients to grow. So we're watering all our poles with a nutrient solution. And I use this, this is what I use for all my plants, plants that are in the soil, plants that are living in semi-hydroponics. I use growth technology foliage focus and I use usually just about five mils per litre and that's what I use. Um, so, what do I do? So, how often do I water? That's a question I usually get. With my plants in semi-hydroponics, it depends on how low the reservoir is. So on a day, on a weekend, when I'm really, really busy, I've got lots of kids' activities on, I don't have time to spend as much uh, time as I would like with my plants, all I do is top up the reservoir. So all I do is get my nutrient solution and just add more solution to the reservoir. I don't take out the reservoir, wash it out and put fresh nutrient because that takes a much longer time. Same thing with my plants living in soil, depending on the plant, depending on the season, depending on how dry it is, I will water the plant. But the poles, the poles have to be watered Depending again on the season, you know when it's hot. I'm living in Australia Melbourne at the moment has been really really hot So that means the poles dry out Quicker so that means I have to keep the poles moist So I couldn't really give you a timeline. It also depends on how thick your pole is So many things so all you have to do really is just touchy You know, it's really easy to tell when a pole is dry. So when the pole is dry It's got a crinkly sound to it you can hear it and when it's moist you know you can tell that it's moist so when it's dry you obviously know that it needs to be uh, watered so one of the things that I have in my repertoire for watering poles is a high pressure spray I know it sounds weird where is my spray my spray is here this is my high pressure spray and in this pressure sprayer is my nutrient solution. So I get my Grow Technology Foliage Focus, dilute that five mils per liter, and have it in my five liter pressure spray. And this pressure spray, I'm just gonna pressurize that for a sec. I use this to spray on my moss before I water it. Why do I do this? When sphagnum moss gets dry, it almost becomes hydrophobic. What do I mean by hydrophobic? That means it will not absorb the water. So if you go and directly water this, you're just gonna have water splashing everywhere because the moss is that dry. So what I tend to do is I've got my pressure spray. I just do a light spray over the moss surface. Note, that is not watering the pole. That does not get adequate water inside the moss. You know, so all you're doing is moistening the moss that's on the outside. The moss that's on the inside, that's actually right next to the roots, is not getting moisturized. So I'm sorry to break this to you guys. Using a little sprayer to moisturize your moss pole is just not going to cut it. You really need to get deep down in there and make sure the whole thing is moist. So this is what I do. 
I get my sprayer and I spray the surface of the moss. So I spray, I'm spraying everywhere that I can spray. And that is so that when I get all the water in there, I don't have as much to clean up because the moss is really just um, flowing it back out. So we're trying to get the moss to not be as hydrophobic. So see how I'm spraying that? I'm spraying in all the areas I can spray. So see how the moss changes color as well. When it's dry, it looks, it's got, it's lighter in color and not as dark as it is when it actually starts to absorb water. So if you look at my Monstera, I will squeeze it and try and see if you can actually hear what dry moss looks, feels, sounds like. That moss is dry and it looks light. It's a very light color compared to moss that's moist. So I am going to spray that and you can see what that looks like now. That's a darker color. So I'll spray this whole moss pole with my nutrient solution. So, oops, I'm gonna bring that with me. So front and back, I'm spraying that front and back. It's important to spray that everywhere. Okay, so that's my sprayer and I think that's done its job for now. So what I'm going to do now is show you the next step. So one of the things that's really important about watering a moss pole when you're indoors, as opposed to taking it outside, which is what I do with my very, very big ones, is you wanna have something to protect your floor because this is a messy exercise. So I've got my bath mats there at the bottom. So any mess that's gonna, any nutrient solution that's gonna run out, run off, it's not gonna be a problem. All I do is just get those bath mats and go and dry them off and problem solved. I'm not dealing with lots and lots of water everywhere. So now that I've moistened my moss poles with my nutrient solution, I'm gonna do the next thing and that's really making sure we get that nutrient solution directly into the moss. So I've got this and this is just a simple bottle with my nutrient solution. This is not water, it's nutrient solution. I am going to get this bottle and so this is my Monstera pole, right? So the pole is here, this is my solution. I am going to tip this over, right? That stays like that, okay? I'll bring it closer. As you can see, the air bubbles are coming up. That means that nutrient solution is going straight into the moss pole. That is how I do it. And I will then just leave this. I'll just leave it, go away, do something else, come back again in a few minutes and that will be gone. And then I will just assess and see whether like most of my pole is done. And if it's not, I'll just put another bottle until the whole of my moss pole is nice and moist. So that is my Monstera. I'll leave my Monstera doing that. I've got another bottle for my silver sword. So I'll show you that in a sec. So this is the bottle for my silver sword. Again, these are just, you know, juice bottles, milk bottles, anything, anything that you use in your home, you can repurpose for this. And depending on the size of your pole, you can either leave it nice and steady like that, or you probably have to hold it in place. So this one is a bit messy, and that's that. I probably, because of the nature of this pole, I'll use my wall, and that just anchors it like that. As you can see, that nutrient solution is going through there. And I leave these and let them do their thing.
Okay, so as you can see, the bottle for the silver sword is completely done. And obviously the moss at the top is wet, but you need to make sure that the moss at the bottom is also wet. So it's just starting to get there, not quite. So what I will do is top this up and put it back on because we're not there yet. Um, the one for the Monstera, the one for the Monstera is still going, almost done. But you know, at this point, you can even just see, I lift that up and the water just runs in and it's fine. The, the moss is sufficiently moist that you can actually do that and it's the, the solution is not going to go everywhere. So again, just to check, so this is nice and moist. Listen how you can't hear anything. That's the difference between moss that's dry and moss that's wet. Moss that's wet, no sound when you squeeze it. See, nothing. Just checking to make sure that the moss at the bottom is wet and not quite. So I will top that one up as well and put the bottles back on. Okay, so I've topped my bottles up and uh, you can just flip it upside down like we did before, go away and come back to after a few minutes, depending on what you've got to do. But I need to go out, my kids wanna go shopping. So I need to wrap this video up. So because the moss at the top is very wet, you could just pour it in. So see, I'm pouring that into the Monstera and I'm not getting nutrient solution everywhere on the floor because the moss is wet. So that's one thing you can do. And that whole bottle, has now, that's gone. So this moss ball has taken two of these, I'm guessing this is 750 mils, it's taken two of those. And you know, the number of times, the more you do it, the more you'll know um, how much your moss ball needs to get absolutely soaking wet, and that's, that's what you want, and it'll make things a bit easier. So this one is going to go into the silver sword, so. There we go. So that again has gone straight in and that water is trickling through down to the rest of the moss pole. Now for the silver sword, I know it takes more, so I will get more and put that in there. So I've got more for my silver sword and I will just be pouring that in there. So the thing to remember about plants that are especially living in soil when you're watering the moss pole is that you're not watering the plant and then watering the moss pole. Watering the moss pole, if you're doing it this way, is more than enough. That gets the soil wet, so there's no need to do that. So what I will now do, that my moss, my moss pole is now completely wet, but what I will do is wait for, so this, it's completely wet, it's soaking wet, so you've got a lot of liquid that's in the moss, and because of gravity, that's all going to drain through right to the bottom. So you will get an accumulation of nutrient solution in the bottom of the pot. Now, you don't want your plant sitting in that because you are going to risk root rot, especially if it's a plant that's living in soil. So what I do is let the plant sit and let the moss drain for about an hour or so. And then when that hour is done, I will then pick up the plant, get rid of the excess nutrient solution and put the plant back where it lives. That is for plants in soil like this silver sword. Plants that are living in a semi-hydroponic setup like my Monstera. The Monstera here is living in Lekka. And the good thing about using your nutrient solution as opposed to just plain water is the nutrient solution that we use in the reservoir is the same nutrient solution that we use in the moss pole. So same thing as with the philodendron. I will let that moss stay and let the excess nutrient solution drain through to the bottom. I will then take the plant out of the reservoir wash out the reservoir and put fresh nutrient solution in the reservoir. You'll still have some nutrient solution trickling from the moss into the reservoir, but that's fine because it's the same solution in the moss, same solution in the reservoir. So what I will now do is wait for the poles to drain 
and then I'll come and show you what they look like at the bottom how much liquid has accumulated how I get rid of that and finally put the plant back where it needs to be I'll show you that once they're done draining hello I'm back it's been more than an hour I went out with the kids bought some food for their lunches this week and now I'm back so really you don't have to stay and babysit your poles while this process is happening so all the water has drained from the moss and is now at the bottom of the pots so I will show you how this works so that there is the monstera moss pole it's quite dark it looks dark and when I press on the moss there you can't hear anything because it's wet and it's significantly heavier than it was before and that's still a little bit of drip coming through there but that's okay so I will then grab the reservoir that's the reservoir there and that's the excess nutrient solution from the moss pole. That's what that is. I will go and throw that out. Gives me an opportunity to also wash out this reservoir and make sure that everything is clean in there. Just to just note that this reservoir actually is still clear because this plant sits in a basket so light doesn't get through to it. That's why there's no evidence of algae in here but otherwise if it wasn't sitting in the basket I'd have that covered so that I don't have algae in there. So that there is my clean reservoir. I'll put the plant back in the reservoir and I will top this reservoir up with nutrient solution and that plant is ready to go. That's the Monstera pole watered and that will be happy. So that's that one. We will now take a look at the Philodendron Silver Sword. The Silver Sword has also been, pole has also been watered, it's been draining and um, there should be a lot of liquid that's accumulated in that pot. And what I'm now going to do is remove the plant from this pot and drain off all the excess liquid. So that's what that's going to look like. So lift that up, put that there, and you can see that I have a lot of liquid in here. There's a lot of liquid. In that pot, I will need to drain that and then I will put the plant back in the pot. And what I actually probably will do with this one, because there's still quite a fair bit of liquid coming out, I will let it sit again, you know, maybe for another 20 minutes or so. And really, the reason to do this is you don't want an accumulation of water in your pot because your plant will get root rot. This plant is living in soil, it's not living in leca, so root rot is a very, very great possibility. So that plant there, we'll just, I'll let that sit there and drain for a little bit. I'm just putting that at an angle so that it can stay there and drain. So that's that. It's at an angle, it's draining a little bit more. That gives me an opportunity to go and wash off the pot and clean, like this is the tray that it lives in, and just clean everything to do with the plant. And by the time all that draining is done, the plant will be ready to go in its pot. My silver sword's been draining for about 10 minutes and I don't see an accumulation of additional water. So I think it's dry enough for it to go back in its pot. I've got the pot here. That's the pot here. So this pot doesn't have a hole. Um, which is good and that's okay because remember the plant has drained so there isn't going to be an accumulation of excess water I've got that in there just in case so I will grab this plant and I put it in its pot so yeah this is my philodendron silver sword and my monstera deliciosa pores have been watered they're back in their pots they're loving life and that will keep for a few days, a few weeks, depending on what the weather's doing. If it's really hot, the poles dry out quicker, but I do like to maintain them. Just a little spritz every few days, just to keep them nice and moist. But like I said, a little spritz is not going to do it. You need to do something like this at least every two weeks at a minimum. So thank you very much for watching. Um, if you'd like to find out how I make my poles, 
please click on the information above and that'll take you directly to my videos where I show you how I make my poles with a plastic sheet backing or poles without a plastic sheet backing. Please like, share and subscribe. Press the notification button for more videos and I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.